it's time to build the flip cart to support my benchtop sander and my planer. What you're watching me do is sketch out some ideas for how I want to go about building this flip cart. I think it'll help out for uh, keeping me on track with some of the cut dimensions and some of the general ideas that I have uh, floating around up there in my head. Well, I'm breaking down the three quarter inch pine plywood. This stuff's a little cheaper than the birch or some of the other veneer finishes you can get in plywood, but it works out really well for what I'm doing. Once I got that all broke down, and moved on to cutting some of the construction grade 2x4s, get them down to rough length so we can go ahead and get the holes drilled to support the through rod for the upper part of the cart. All this rough cutting and drilling will really make start to make sense here as we move forward with the build. Once I kind of had everything laid out, I went ahead and marked out where the pocket holes were going to go to support the structural framework. Took it over to the pocket hole jig, put that thing to good use, and drilled a bunch of these holes. This was the first time I had used this on thicker material, and it worked very, very well. I was very happy with how it turned out, and the holes are definitely hidden and out of sight, out of mind. Well, we've assembled the flippy part, or the top. This is the framework that the sander and planer will get bolted to. And what I've done is I've pre-cut the bottom pieces. So this is the beginning of the framework for the bottom. All right, well, I finished putting together the bottom frame with the Craig pocket holes. Pretty square, pretty flat, pretty happy with that. Now that we've got the framework done, I went ahead and started breaking down the plywood to get it ready for the bottom of the cart. Went ahead and used some glue and then uh, some T25 star drive screws. Screwed the plywood down to the framework. Then I started cutting the sides of the cart. This stuff is that three quarter inch pine plywood. It, uh, it's a really light color so the pins will show up really well. Finished up the holes, then I took it over to the bandsaw to cut off the excess material and then round over the corners. I really like this bandsaw. I really wish I would have bought it a long time ago and not waited so long. I think that's pretty safe to say for most tools that you buy, but you always end up realizing you should have bought it way before you did and live and learn. Sometimes that's just life. I threw together a quick little jig to use with my router in order to get these lines routed into the sideboards to support the upper part of where the drawer is going to go. This is similar to a skill saw guide that you would use. Basically a little thin piece of plywood, uh, edge for the guide to run against, and away you go. So I have the upper portion of the drawer done and I'm going to go ahead and use pocket holes so that I can mount it using screws from the underneath side so the screw holes will be hidden when it's all put together. It's just kind of one of those things where I'm practicing so that when I build my cabinets, the cabinets turn out really well. This is the type of thing that you really want to plan ahead so the screw holes are all hidden. So practice makes perfect and doing it this way was a little more time consuming, but overall I think it turned out a better end product. So you see those pocket holes I just put together and now I've got the base in place. And then I realized that the pocket holes were in the way of the uh, casters. So I ended up having to drill those holes and then put portions of the casters together, as you'll see, and then put the pocket holes in. It all came together. It all worked out well in the end. Um, 
like I said, practice makes perfect, and this is definitely something that I don't think I would have foreseen, um, even if I had really thought it through. Uh, but like I said, it's uh, easy to overcome, especially on the bottom of something like this where it's never going to be seen. And I grabbed my grinder and cut off those bolts, which were quite a bit longer than I needed, but I really wasn't sure when I was down at the hardware store what size to get, so I got a little bit longer and whacked them off with the grinder, and we were all good to go. I'm assuming the top of the flip cart, and the side I'm screwing down right now is where the sander will get mounted eventually. So the position of those screws really didn't matter because I had a lot of space to work with. Went ahead and routed off the corners, put a little cord around on those, just to make it feel a little nicer when you're touching it and flipping it back and forth. You know, this thing's kind of more heavy towards the planer side, so I didn't want to catch my hand with uh, with those sharp edges. Now you'll see me put on a portion of the other side, and this is the permanent portion that gets done with the screws, and this other piece is where the planer will get mounted. I put that seam so that the planer, like you see here, will be mounted on the larger piece of wood to give it more support. Uh, this is all put together this way in order to get the wiring to work properly. I figured this would be the easiest way to deal with it, and having that extra seam kind of run right up against the edge of the planer really didn't affect much so overall I think it turned out pretty good in doing it this way I went ahead and mounted the locking mechanisms these are window latches I liked the way these look this is a that brushed nickel finish and they work really well you can kinda of feel with your thumb without having to look specifically this took four sets to get enough of the hardware to make this all work so that was a little bit pricey but it worked out well in the end and I feel that these will be the best lockdown mechanism for the style of cart that I built once I did that it was time to go ahead and mark out for the sander mark the holes for the drill grab the drill and drill a couple of these holes I used uh, nuts that get pounded into the back of the plywood somebody can tell me what those are called I just can't remember off the top of my head so we got this on here, made sure we got those holes all done, made sure everything's lined up. I wanted to point out those, I'm going to call them a nut cert, but they basically have little tines on them that get driven into the plywood. That way they're like a blind nut. You don't have to have the nut held up with a backup wrench on the other side. This works really well in this application where I have two things mounted to two different sides and stuff inside of the framework. As you see here, we're getting ready to start installing the electrical stuff, at least getting the wire run to do a check fit so that we can go ahead and move on to getting the ends ready to go. So pounding the nut certs in on the other side, it was just a quick thing I had to take care of real quick before we moved on to marking out the, what is that, three quarter inch steel scheduling pipe. And then uh, I went ahead and drilled the threads out of a flange so that we can go ahead and get it TIG brazed in place. So I'm using silicon bronze filler wire. TIG braze this part because this is a casting. This is cast steel of some sort. So you, 
I'm sure a lot of you realize that TIG welding is not this fast. I edited this and I cut out all of the parts where it was really super bright and blinding to the camera so that you hear these little pops and boom and it looks like I put a bunch of weld wire down in a split second which is not what happened. I just cut out a bunch of the stuff so you guys can get an idea of how the silicon bronze went in there but you know what I mean. I didn't want to blind you guys for five minutes while I TIG braze this thing together. Now we're moving on to using some scrap hardwood flooring that I had left over from a previous project. I planed off the finish, I planed off the uh, grooves that were in, in it in order to install it on the floor. Then I went ahead and ripped it down to little tiny half by half pieces, or maybe they were three quarter by three quarter, I don't remember. Turned it into edge banding, as you see here, kind of getting a rough idea. I've never really done edge banding before, so this was a lot of learning for me. And I did learn a lot from it, I can tell you that for sure. Ran it through the planer, got it down to the thickness I was looking for. Um, and we took it over there and we started getting it glued on in place. I, I only used glue to hold this on. I didn't feel it was necessary to put any kind of other fasteners or pin nails or anything into it. Um, I grabbed a bunch of these spring clamps that I had put rubber inner tubes on to use as edge band clamps. Saw that on a YouTube video. Go check some of those out. Worked really well. Got it put on there, got it glued up. Let it dry. While the glue was drying on the trim, I decided to go ahead and start building some little shelves on the, for the side of the cabinet to store some of the tools for the planer and router in. I did need to make these at a 15 degree angle, if I believe correctly. Multiple cuts at 15 degrees to get everything lined up properly. Use the pocket holes again to kind of use some hidden uh, fasteners. Then I used the table saw to cut a groove for the plywood bottom to slide into. All stuff I've never really done before, but it turned out really well and really glad I did it. Definitely gives me that extra storage as you'll see once they're mounted on the side that I need for the router blades, the sander spindles, the sander guards and guide plates. Definitely worth it. After the glue dried on the shelves, I went ahead and lined them up where they go and drilled some holes so that I could use some screws from the inside to get them mounted to the cabinet. Then I went ahead and grabbed my trim router and used it to clean up the edge of the edge banding. I had the bit sticking out way too far because I had never really done this before and I ended up nicking the plywood in several places. Once I get the stain on at the end of the video you'll see that that's pretty hidden, you can't really tell, but it was a mistake that I really was concerned with that I wasn't, wasn't really happy with, but overall it turned out okay in the end. All right, we're ready to actually go ahead and assemble this thing finally. Using the pipe I used, the three quarter inch piping, 
it turned out that I was able to use my pipe wrenches to adjust the snugness between those fittings because I had brazed on the flanges on the end. And it clamps the flip cart top in such a way that it creates friction which assists with how fast the cart flips once the tools are installed. It works really well and it was an unforeseen benefit to using the pipe the way that I did and then brazing the end caps on versus having them threaded on. This thing was a giant pain in the butt to get put together correctly. Once I got it on there and got the cord routed kind of down inside, you'll see I moved it over to the edge and have to slide the planer off of there. And it all worked out in the end. It would have been really nice to have an extra set of hands, but we made it work and got it put together, got it bolted down, got the screws installed, and the wiring is done. I was concerned that the balance was going to be really far off, but it seems to be pretty dang good. All right, so I moved on to making the drawer. Never built a drawer before, so this was the very first time I had done that. I used a couple of half-inch scrap pieces of plywood that I have left over from a different job. Cut it down to size, routed the groove for the bottom, and uh, cut the bottom board to the correct size. Oop, doing a little check fit there, making sure my grooves are good with a piece of scrap. Turns out they were. Went over to the pocket hole jig, got that all set up. This is half inch, and that's about the smallest, well, thinnest board you can really use effectively on that pocket hole jig. But we got it put together, and it turned out pretty good. You see I'm just throwing this thing together with some glue, gluing all the joints, gluing the bottom board in place, not letting it float, and go ahead and put it together with those pocket hole screws. This thing is rock solid. Once it dried, it was not going anywhere. I went ahead and used a recessed base frame for the drawer, which looks nice, but man, is it ever a pain in the rear to get that thing lined up just right. And I had made some small errors along the way with measuring and cutting and some of the boards warping, but we got it good. And I'll tell you what, that face frame board is not a perfect rectangle. It is sanded and just adjusted ever so slightly in order to get it to fit in there just right. And even then, it didn't turn out as well as I would have liked, but it turned out good enough that nobody but me will ever notice. So this is the back of the drawer. Um, had I been thinking, I would not have done edge banding here and here. I would have just made a solid piece, but I wasn't thinking that far ahead. So now the back of the drawer shows when it's installed. So what I did was I laminated together two pieces of uh, scrap oak hardwood floor I had. I used a piece of plywood uh, door skin to use it as a sort of a backer to hold this together real nice. Got that glued up and it's smooth. 
And we made sure we did a nice tight check fit, which I already did, and it is really snug, so we're just gonna put a couple beads of glue around here and push it in, wipe it off, and call it good. I am using, what is this? Wood finish Minwax. This is a penetrating stain special walnut 224. I did go ahead and throw some pre-stain on there, the Minwax pre-stain. Definitely was necessary when you have that different uh, species of wood. I've got that oak edge banding and then I have the pine plywood. Definitely evened everything up so that the stain took a little more even. The stain's a pretty dark color and Probably should have gone with a little lighter color, but for what it is, it turned out pretty well. It's finally done. The hodgepodge of skills that I never got to use have been put to use so that this gave me the practice I'm hoping to utilize when I go build my shop cabinets. That's really what this was about for me. Uh, doing edge banding, never done that before. Building a drawer, as simple as that sounds, I had never done that either. Overall, it turned out really well. Um, got to try a lot of things I'd never done before. It went a little overkill on the electrical, but not having the quartz flop around is really the way to go, in my opinion. None of this was directly out of my head. It wasn't any of my ideas. I searched YouTube and the internet and found all these different components and things and different videos and how-tos and put them all together for what I think will work the best for me. Uh, the sander and planer, were not an effective tool for me because they were always in the corners collecting dust. I never really got an opportunity to use them. Now that they're on a cart up and where I can use them, I suspect that this will make them so much more efficient and effective in my shop than they were in the past. Overall, I think there's a lot to be gained from uh, the few things that I did on this video um, during this build. By all means, if you see anything you'd liked, please leave me a comment. If you see some stuff that I might have done better, by all means, let me know. Uh, if you have any questions at all, please leave those down below. I'll be more than happy to get back to you. Overall, I really appreciate you guys watching. Check me out on Instagram and Facebook. There'll be links in the description. Hit that subscribe button. That always helps me out in the long run. And check out the uh, tractor series of videos in the garage build. Appreciate you guys watching. Hope you got something out of this.